Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have for you today episode 6.2 of the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. Episode 6.2 is entitled Lack of Individualization. The evasiveness on the astral plane of people who are obsessible or possessible in terms of not indicating a name, not being willing to put forth a name, or not knowing their names on the astral plane, indicates to me that the negative astral beings do not have a sense of individuality. They are not like that at all. They are not like human beings who are individualized with souls, with physical bodies and subtle bodies, including the causal body, as parts of their human makeup. In case you're new to the notion of individualization, you can learn a little more about that by going to my website Awakening with Planet Earth https colon slash slash awakening with planet earth dot com and looking for the blog category labeled individual souls hyphen individualization. I have an image for you entitled Illustration depicting an individual with dissociative identity disorder. It's by Zero Four Mukti. It's from Wikimedia Commons and it's Creative Commons. And here it is. You can see in the center a man who looks frightened with his arms crossed, and around him are other kinds of people. A woman, other men, people with different expressions on their faces, and a child. And I, from my recollection of my reading in psychology in my college days, this disorder, which was known by a different name back then, it's multiple personality disorder, has to do with people who switch from one identity to another identity uh, just all of a sudden and start talking in another voice or uh, with a different personality uh, and it used to be known by that other name. Now it's dissociative identity disorder. And the idea I had behind showing you this image is that people who have multiple personality issues or dissociative identity disorder I seem not to know, or this is the psychological notion, is that they have no notion of what individual they are. So they settle upon one individual and another individual and then another individual and act out those roles as if it didn't really matter which was which. Now, I have a different idea about that. Um, that that there's a demon that comes down and 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 uh, causes this trouble with a human soul. But I'll discuss that in another place. And in the meantime, I'd just like you to know that a person who is obsessible or possessible may present to the world uh, this identity or that identity, this personality or that personality, this gender or that gender, and yet be a person in a particular physical form. And that I take to be an indication that negative astral entities don't really have individuation. They take on personality and gender from the people in the world today, 
it, they mimic them. That's what I think. All right. Here's a section called Mimicry of Personality. You may hear astral voices purportedly moving from the voice of one person to the voice of another person. On and on. The ruling intelligence behind this flight from mimicking of one personality to mimicking of the next is, I feel, a negative astral being. On the astral plane, that being is dipping into <laughs> the central vertical power current or kundalini of one person and mimicking their voice on the astral plane and then going on to the central vertical power current of another person and dipping into that and mimicking their astral voice. The negative astral being itself has no personality but through this quote soul signature dipping unquote or quote skinny dipping unquote as I sometimes term it, it may momentarily clothe itself with the personality of a person. And that is why we can't trust voices on the astral plane because sometimes they are the voices of people and sometimes they are the voices, I feel, of negative astral entities mimicking the voices of people, especially people that we know and love or friends or business associates and so forth. Sometimes a negative astral being obsesses or possesses just one person for a while. When that happens, apparently the negative astral being can take on the personality of that person. Then, when the being, quote, skinny dips, unquote, that's my term, the person it dips into is secondarily and temporarily obsessed or possessed person can briefly take on the thoughts and personality of the primarily obsessed or possessed person. Uh, I know that this is a novel idea, one that I came up with to explain astral phenomena I've encountered over the years. If you'd like to read more about it, you can go to my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, and look for the category skinny dipping and in parentheses soul signature dipping these are two terms for the same phenomenon mimicry of gate I have observed lately and with an eerie sense of deja vu mimicry of gate through quote skinny dipping unquote obsession or possession by a negative astral being. Apparently, the negative being becomes accustomed to the gait of its primarily obsessed or possessed person. Then when the being skinny dips, the secondarily and temporarily obsessed or possessed person assumes the gait, the movement of the hips while walking the placement of the feet, the lightness of step, and so on, the gait of the first person. Of course, it is most likely nothing all that sinister. A second explanation would be that negative astral beings have an infatuation with gait as an expression of personality. To them, it may seem that they are clothing themselves with human form by mimicking gait. I have a blog to recommend to you that describes this phenomenon of gait mimicry. It's from my website, Awakening with Planet Earth. And if you go there, you can look up the title, GAIT, that's G-A-I-T, Mimicry, colon, Doppelganger Spirit, 
question mark. And you will learn a little more about my theory of gate mimicry because of obsession or possession by a negative astral entity. Here's a new section entitled 1994 Stargate Movie and Gate Mimicry. To me, gate mimicry is an especially unnatural phenomenon to witness. Intuitively, it feels to me like very black magic, like the negative astral being has stolen the soul of the second person. In terms of the sort of eeriness that overcomes me while viewing this gate phenomenon, it reminds me of the odd gate of the being named Ra, R-A, in the 1994 version of the Stargate movie. And the end of the movie, where a negative astral being is revealed to be inhabiting the form of the young man. Okay, here's an erratum to do with this section. It, the erratum is entitled, Dimensionality of Negative Astral Beings. In terms of the reality of the situation here on Earth, I would like to point out that the negative astral being in the movie, Stargate, most likely because of technical limitations, was portrayed as a physical being within the physical boy. Whereas this is not actually the case here on Earth. Rather, our astral forms, which are one of our subtle body energies, are obsessed or possessed by the negative astral being. Our astral forms exist in the fourth dimension, not the third dimension. They are made of finer matter than the physical forms we see with our physical eyes. Here is a second erratum entitled, The True Ra is Service to Others. Also with regard to the 1994 Stargate movie, the use of the word Ra, R-A, for the negative astral being is unfortunate and no doubt intentional on the part of mind-controlling negative astral beings. That is because the social memory complex Ra, as described in The Law of One, the Ra material, and as I experienced it to be through their emissary Ra-N, that's R-A hyphen E-N, are star brethren of Christed light and love who live in service to others rather than service to self. Like the negative astral beings termed the Orion group in the book The Law of One. I have some reading recommendations for you. One is the book, The Law of One, The Raw Material, which is available free online at the URL https colon slash slash www.lawofone.info forward slash. The category Orion, O-R-I-O-N, has to do with negative astral entities. Also, at the Law of One website, you can search for the term Ra, R-A. Then for more on negative astral beings and their intentions towards human beings, you can go to 
the website Energetic Synthesis, which is a terrific website as well, uh, and search for the article. You know, I woke up from a nap and came to do this video. Right after the nap, I recalled like a curse or a slanderous repeated saying that seemed to be floating around in my energy field every time I napped during the day. Then I came here and there was nothing but noise, loud motor noise and overhead airplanes and all kinds of obnoxious sounds. I have to say there's something going on right now in the newosphere. I just don't know what it is. I can only call it dark interference. And I apologize for the sound uh, interference on the video today. I hope it will be all right and that you'll still be able to understand what I'm saying. Uh-oh. Anyway, to go on with these reading recommendations, uh, there's a website called Energetic Synthesis that I highly recommend. The URL is https colon slash slash energeticsynthesis.com and there you can search for the article entitled The Negative Alien Agenda and in parentheses NAA. That article will explain a little more to you about what it is that the negative astral entities are hoping to obtain from the human race through their acts of obsession and possession. It's a very informative website. Then I have one other recommendation. This has to do with my encounter of the true beings of Ra who are inhabitants of our planet Venus who exist on higher dimensional planes than we. It was a high point in my own life and I hope you'll have a chance to read this blog. Uh, it's at my website Awakening with Planet Earth and the title to look for is the blog Ra-N First Contact with a Star Civilization. Uh, you may know that I've had first contact with a number of different unusual sorts of beings that are not human. And if you want, just for fun, you can go to my website and look up the term first contact to see what appeals to you uh, in the way of extraterrestrials. <laughs> first contact is a cool idea, isn't it? And I hope all the light workers have a chance to channel first contact information from many different non-human species, especially those of love and light, Christed energy. Those are the most rewarding for us humans, I feel, because that represents our future as a social memory complex. Our future as a race of sentient beings. Well, that's all for now, dear ones. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.